Well, welcome to my Wellness with Wendy online class. Today we're going to talk about nutrition and oils, supplements, exercise, the things that you're going to want to do to choose how you age, to help us age gracefully. And uh, so I just kind of want to get started by saying I'm a doTERRA wellness advocate. I love my doTERRA, my doTERRA business. I use the oils every day in my home and at work and my family and friends. They are all much healthier since I've been introduced to this company. So that's really a lot of what we're going to talk about today. But I want you to look at this picture. I love this picture. Each of these women are 74 years old, but you know that they've made different choices to end up where they are. So I'm a certified holistic nutritionist. My story isn't really relevant today, except to say that I used to weigh a lot more than I do now, almost 200 pounds. And my journey to find and maintain a healthy weight and a healthy body has led me to seek out not just weight loss tips and tricks, but all around good health. One of the many roads that this has led me down is to discover how food and doTERRA oils actually affect our overall health. When we treat our bodies well, when we feed our bodies the fuel they need, when we use oils that work in harmony with how our bodies are designed, then the terrible effects of aging that we see all around us are avoided or they are made much, much easier. So to avoid being affected by the perils of aging and the terrifying, really scary possibility of losing our memories as we get older, we've got to take precautions now by treating our bodies with respect. And because I'm a certified holistic nutritionist, I know that just one approach isn't going to get the results that you want. It's a combination of factors. Now, for example, if you're eating raw organic foods, but you're still using toxins and chemicals to clean with, we're not going to be as healthy. If we start exercising, but we have an unbalanced diet, we're not going to be as healthy. If we're using essential oils for aromatherapy, but we're taking over-the-counter medications for minor ailments, we're really canceling out some of the good that we're trying to do. We need a balance in all areas to truly live a healthy lifestyle. So the factors I'm going to focus on today are nutrition, exercise, supplements, and essential oils. So when we say we are what we eat, it's not just a cliche. I mean, truly, what enters your digestive system quite literally shapes your health. The digestive tract is a center of nutrition, of course, but also immunity, even neural processes. So if your intestinal system is faltering, the whole body suffers. Nutrition also plays a factor in our mental health as we age. When we fuel our bodies, we're also fueling our minds. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that one in nine people in the U.S. age 65 and older suffers from Alzheimer's disease. Researchers say that one new case of dementia is detected every four seconds around the world, and they estimate that by the year 2050, more than 115 million people will have dementia worldwide. It is the sixth leading cause of death in our nation, and unfortunately, it's on the rise. Now, what we don't know and what we aren't, aren't really aware of is that there's a strong connection between the gut and the brain. If you have an overgrowth of bad bacteria or yeast, that can contribute to mood disorders and depression. It'll also, of course, add to gastrointestinal issues like constipation or diarrhea. And honestly, when we're young adults or kids or even, you know, adults now, we often become a little too free with junk foods. That junk food can damage beneficial bacteria in our intestines. So as we get older then, we've spent a lifetime damaging and otherwise eliminating this good bacteria. So then we start getting things like food sensitivities, leaky gut, IBS, and when it comes to our brains, the lack of those healthy bacteria can contribute to symptoms of depression, schizophrenia, and other mental disorders. Even for people at a healthy weight, a poor diet is associated with major health risks that can cause illness and even death. These include heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, certain types of cancer. And honestly, so much of our food issues come from processed foods. That means anything that's been manufactured in a plant by some big food company rather than grown on a plant. 
Diets high in refined sugars are harmful to the brain. I mean, you don't think about it being harmful to your brain, but it really is. In addition to worsening your body's regulation of insulin, they promote inflammation, oxidative stress. There have been so many studies that have found a correlation between a diet high in refined sugars and impaired brain function, and even a worsening of symptoms of mood disorders such as depression. I mean, think about it. Like, you're ex like an expensive car, your brain functions best when it gets premium fuel. So when you eat high-quality foods that contain lots of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, those nourish the brain. They protect it from that oxidative stress, that, which is the waste that's produced when the body uses oxygen, and that can damage cells. But just like an expensive car, your brain can be damaged if you ingest anything other than premium fuel. I mean, think about this. If you had a prize racehorse, you wouldn't feed it a Big Mac and fries, right? No, you'd feed it the fuel that would allow it to win races. So let's kind of shift over to exercise here. If I want to age well, if I want to continue to fit in my clothes well, if I want to feel well, then I don't know that it's necessary for me to work out five to six days a week for at least 20 minutes. Now, there's so many benefits to exercise. It helps you control your weight. It reduces your risk of some cancers, really, truly. It strengthens your bones and muscles. It improves your mental health and your mood. And it increases your chances of living longer. I'm going to tell you about a study done at the University of British Columbia. They found that regular aerobic exercise, you know, the kind that gets your heart and your sweat glands pumping, that appears to boost the size of the hippocampus. That's the brain area that's involved in verbal memory and learning. Um, resistance training, balance, muscle toning exercises, they didn't have the same results. So that's the aerobic exercise that had this results. So let's talk about how much exercise is required to improve memory. So these study participants walk briskly for one hour twice a week. That's it. That's 120 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week. Standard recommendations, they advise about a half an hour of moderate physical activity most days of the week, about you know, 150 days a week, so three, 30 minutes for five, time, for five days. So if that seems a little daunting, just start with a few minutes a day and increase the amount that you exercise by five or 10 minutes every week until you reach your goal. So those are, there, there are three different types of exercise. Aerobic, which is running, walking, swimming, cycling. Strength, weights and calisthenics. And then the flexibility. And that's even the stretching and the dance and the yoga, that's considered a, a main type of exercise. But you don't need to start, you know, by creating a half an hour a day if you don't want to. As a beginner, just start out with small little steps. You don't go to the gym and work out for three hours straight. Create a habit. So start small with some gentle stretches and a short 10-minute walk each day. And when that becomes a habit, start to build some aerobic or strength activities to your week. Aim for 10 minutes, like three days a week. Then once that becomes a habit, start to build some aerobic and or strength ex activities to your week. So you can find excitement and you can stay committed. So let's get moving. Let's take a look at the oils, the essential oils that you can use that are really excellent for aging. And we're just gonna focus on a couple of them. First off, let's talk about frankincense. What's frankincense good for? Well, it can actually reduce the appearance of sunspots and age spots. If you have uneven color on your skin, some whiteness in some areas, spottiness, splotchiness, frankincense oil is the number one ingredient that can help even out your skin tone and help get rid of sunspots and age spots. It's also a powerful astringent, which means that it helps protect skin cells. This oil can be used anywhere where the skin becomes saggy, like the abdomen, jowls, under your eyes and it has the ability to strengthen skin and improve its tone, its elasticity, its defense mechanisms against bacteria or blemishes. It also can help it strengthen your skin and your, improve your appearance as you age. Then let's look at lavender. It is actually probably the number one 
oil for your skin. It helps to heal skin conditions. We often just think of lavender as something that smells pretty and helps you to relax, but it actually helps to heal your skin conditions, burns, cuts, but because it specifically targets your skin, it gets you into a healing state and it improves, the, it sounds odd, but the cellular communication within your skin. Lavender essential oil is it, it helps your body produce three of your body's most powerful antioxidants, and you need those antioxidants to successfully fight free radical damage. And so those are just two of the wonderful oils that you can use to help age as far as your appearance. Let's talk a little bit about using the essential oils for dementia. And this here is a picture of my grandmother, and, and we lost her almost a year ago now. And if I had known then what I know now about nutrition, about essential oils, I'm hoping that it would have made a difference. She lost her memory beginning about 10 years ago. You know, as the search continues for a cure for Alzheimer's and related dementias, some research suggests that aromatherapy and the use of essential oils may actually treat certain symptoms of the disease. I mean, studies have shown that aromatherapy can ease symptoms of anxiety. It can offer relief from symptoms of depression. It can improve the quality of life for people living with chronic health conditions. So here are a few oils that have been shown to be effective in treating and controlling different symptoms of dementia. Lavender. Lavender is thought to be calming and able to balance strong emotions. It's also been used to help with depression, anger, irritability, and it can help in some cases of insomnia. Peppermint, on the other hand, is an energizer. It can be used to stimulate the mind and calm nerves at the same time. Now, rosemary, like peppermint, is an uplifting oil. It's used to stimulate the mind and the body. It may even improve cognitive performance and mood. Bergamot, I love bergamot. It can be used to re relieve anxiety, agitation, mild depression, stress. And then there's ylang ylang, and that can help ease depression while also promoting good sleep. This is a great oil, not only for a person living with Alzheimer's, but also for caregivers who struggle with restlessness and lack of sleep. And then finally, ginger. Ginger is helpful for anyone struggling with digestion issues. Um, it's commonly used to treat a loss of appetite and constipation, but it can also help promote good eating habits. But really, we don't want to be on the edge of dementia in order to use oils to help our brain health. I mean, when it comes to concentration and supporting your brain health, there are so many ways to use the oils to improve your focus. For example, peppermint oil has been proven to improve brain function and productivity by 28%. There are several blends that can help you with things like memory and recall, concentration, decision-making. There are so many different ways that the oils can help us with our brains and for brain health. Of course, there are so many different ways to improve your brain health and help us age gracefully. I mean, we've only touched on a few. Sleep is essential. Prayer or meditation, that is also very important. But when it comes to protecting our mind and our body from the harmful effect of aging, nutrition, exercise, and doTERRA oils, they go hand in hand in hand. Thank you so much for being with me today with our Wellness with Wendy online class. I hope that you've gotten some really good information out of this. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to talk more about the doTERRA supplements and how those are going to be helpful as well when it comes to aging, when it comes to nutrition, uh, when it comes to just living your best life. So thanks for being with me and have a fantastic evening.